I first became interested in gender, I think, as a young child growing up. My mother was working at MIT, Lincoln Labs, as a scientist, mathematician. And at the time, it didn't strike me as strange until I started getting older and realizing there were a few women in that field. And so I really became fascinated with the idea that my mom was in some ways kind of a pioneer in, in that area. So that was really interesting and inspiring for me. And then when I went to Chile to do a volunteer program for a couple of years, I lived with a couple of women who were also very strong feminists and really learned through their work. We were all doing community development and they were focusing on women's groups specifically and women's issues. And so that was a really neat segue for me to sort of understand all that. Particularly we're in Chile where it's a, a sort of culture where it's difficult for men, particularly foreign men, to have access to women in a way that they might sort of share more intimate details and stories about their lives. So that kind of opened my eyes to that aspect. And then when I started doing my research in Guatemala, I was finding similar sorts of barriers where I was doing oral histories and the men would all say, oh, you need to talk to the elder men in the community. That's who they would send me to. And I, so I was sort of following the community's lead on that, but at the same time wanted to have a more assertive research agenda and figure out what it was that women were talking about. How did they reconstruct the past? What was important to them? What sort of events? What kind of iconic figures? And it was interesting to me how different their stories were and that they really had a sort of counter narrative that both fit into the broader community narrative but also told their own stories about what it was like to be a Maya woman, an indigenous woman. Well, one of the things I like to do is to bring my research into the class. Uh, so one of my favorite classes to do is women and gender in Latin America. And I use some of the oral histories I've gained there, and as well as some archival documents that I've been able to have translated to allow students to, you know, explore the craft of being a historian, you know, work with those primary sources and figure out how do we tell, you know, what is it that women were dealing with? Can we get a sense of what they might have been thinking? There's one interesting document I always like to share about a Maya woman who was cross-dressing at the turn of the century, you know, sort of. I've not found anything like it in the archives before, and there's very little written about cross-dressing in Guatemala, so I suspect it wasn't very common. But what you get is, you know, she gives certain reasons about how she wanted to be able to migrate to the coast and earn better pay, which tells you a lot about gender relations and the way in which women didn't have equal access to employment, to wages, to mobility. At the same time, was there something else about her cross-dressing that she couldn't tell in front of a male judge or the, the mayor or the scribe, right? Is there some way in which she may have felt more like a man than a woman? Um, so those are really interesting things, I think, to bring up in class and to play with and allow students to sort of explore, too. Uh, I can remember my first time teaching Introduction to Women's Studies, which I really enjoyed because it's so broad. And my own background is Latin American studies, so I'm sort of interdisciplinary by nature. So it was really neat to, to, in some ways, be freed from necessarily having to look at historical texts and historical sources and now look at much broader cultural and literature, all sorts of other contributions. But there were only two students in the class who were male, and a lot of the people were sort of shocked that I was the teacher there, right? Because, of course, you only see the last name. Um, but I found that people were very accepting, and we could sort of... One of the things I like about USM, and particularly the classroom here, is the ability to develop a sense of community where people feel confident sharing their perspectives and ideas, even if they're, you know, going to argue or debate with someone in the classroom. There's sort of this sense of respect, I think. I mean, gender is everywhere in a way, right? I mean, you sort of, it's hard to think about the past history. It's hard to think about the present without thinking about gender. I mean, it's sort of this very primal relationship in many ways. And, and it's very complicated in the sense that it changes in time, it changes in place, it depends where you are. Again, the, the idea of taking a, a women and gender studies class, I think it can really help you to think more deeply and maybe reconceptualize a lot of stuff that you're doing in other classes, right? And maybe even where the issue of gender isn't raised, you'll start to see areas where you could raise that in the class, or at least think about it, you know, in terms of how might this affect the uh, sort of scientific experiment if the scientists were women or men, right? What sorts of interpretations? I, uh, one of the examples I use in my introduction to Latin America course is about one of the first finds in Mexico of the very early people was dated to about 9,000 BC. And for many decades, they always called it the Tepanek man. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago they figured out it was actually a woman, right? And, you know, so, so those sorts of things where you had the archaeologists were male, they just assumed what they found must have been a man, right? Um, so I think, you know, it's sort of day-to-day -day activities and interactions, understanding gender relations can be really helpful.